Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So as it's coming into the support zone, the momentum on this actually slowed as it came into the upper part of the congestion, which would be a price support level. So in this case, the price support, which had been resistance at A, served to slow the sharp momentum breakdown, which took place earlier this month. So even though the market didn't actually reverse at that support level, it slowed the pace of that selling and allowed it to kind of fall into this greater congestion zone from the support level uh, back in December through February. Notice that as we're looking at these previous highs and previous lows, a lot of times they don't hit exactly, particularly a second time around. Sometimes they will fall a little bit shy of what that exact price resistance level was or price support level. We saw the same thing here in B, where there was an initial low made, and then as it came back into that zone again, it didn't quite hit it exactly. So it fell a little bit shy of it. So as you're thinking of the support and resistance zone, again, really pay attention to the fact that they are not necessarily exact support and resistance levels. Now, I know there's a lot of questions um, that you guys do have, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take time at the end of this presentation to answer some of these questions. So please feel free to uh, continue to post them, but I'm probably not going to get to a lot of them until a little bit later. That way we don't don't uh, run out of time or anything or get off track, which tends to be a, a primary concern as well. Here's just another example looking at support and resistance zones. So we have an initial high that was made, and that kind of held, fell into a congestion zone. Here's another low here. Again, it held very well. But as the momentum picked up going into it, notice it was able to push through that price zone. So one of the next things that we're going to look at, actually, is pace and momentum. Now, pace and momentum... Basically, the two terms are kind of interchangeable. It's just a measurement of a trend move in a security as compared to not only what the average price move is, but also the most recent price move on a given time frame. And this pace is based upon how fast it takes for prices to change within a particular amount of time. So if we go and look at this previous slide again, for instance, notice that there was an extremely sharp drop here into 9 as it came into this previous support level. And when you have the momentum, in other words, the pace of change, um, increasing dramatically into a support or resistance level, a lot of times that level can be pushed to an extreme, so the zone can be stretched out just like you would stretching out like a rubber band, for instance. Um, oftentimes, if the uh, support zone is close enough and the momentum has really increased, it can even break through that level fairly easily. If the momentum is a lot more gradual into a support zone, like we saw here in six, there was kind of a bit of a slowdown into this level, then it can hold a lot better. Let me see if I have an example of that on the previous chart. So here's, here's a good example here with D. Notice there was some extreme momentum initially coming off of that high marked E, but that momentum shifted and changed as it came into this previous low. So it was able to hold that previous low a lot better than it was over here heading into August when the momentum was extremely sharp on the downside. Here's the uh, sort of textbook um, chart or graph that I like to use in, in my presentations when I'm talking about momentum or pace because it shows you a lot of how these price moves can develop and play out over time. For instance, if you have 
a typical average upswing move and a gradual correction, maybe this is a base or a bull flag, that type of thing, then you can get a similar breakout or a similar continuation pattern to resume the trend that's already in play heading into that correction or congestion zone. When the momentum begins to shift, however, and you have a stronger pullback, such as marked here on C as compared to A, then the momentum coming out of that move can also shift very easily. So for instance, here we have it slowing coming out of C going into D. Now we have a very obvious change in, in pace and change in momentum because we had this sharper upside move on B. Let me clear this up here. We have this sharp upside move on B, but we have a much more gradual move on the upside on D. Not only is it gradual compared to an upswing move such as what's labeled as B here, but also if you went back and looked at this over time, you probably would notice that in a chart, any particular security, it's also more gradual than the average move of pretty much any of the trend moves. And when you have that type of situation occurring, this is a really good opportunity to get in and position yourself on the short side looking for a breakdown from that trend channel. A lot of times this can form with a slightly higher high, which is a pattern that I've called a 2T. It's just a double top. And the slightly higher high basically just traps players that are buying a breakout above a previous high. They might have, for instance, seen that the pullback on C, while it was stronger than the pullback on A, was still on the more gradual side. So they might have just assumed that because of that, it, was, it would be able to continue the trend and push through and break strongly higher again on D. Um, one of the things that would have had an impact on whether it could do that or not is kind of what's going on in the larger trend, and we'll look at that here in a couple of minutes. Now, as the pace or the momentum begins to shift, notice that because this was a more gradual upside move in D, it was able to follow through much more strongly on the downside. So you have this sharp breakdown. However, it bounced almost as quickly in S, and when you have this bounce similar to this where it almost took back all of the losses from the previous downside move. When you have this deep V formation, it's usually a good indicator that there's going to be some sort of trading range or longer congestion move play out. Now it might be something where it falls into a triangle and can eventually break out higher again. It's not we have a little bit of a jumping here, but so you might have a triangle that ends up breaking out higher, but a lot of times if you watch the moves within the trading range itself, you can get a heads up for which direction that range is going to break. For instance, is this range going to be able to change momentum and eventually again break higher and resume the previous trend? Or is the momentum shift favoring a breakdown on the downside? Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.